as tedious and some of the little properties and everything that we've been doing. So we're going to solve radical equations today. That just means you're going to have like a square root, fourth root, cube root, somewhere in the equation. So these are not expressions that we're simplifying. These are equations that we are solving. So all this is going to be a blank for is going to be a radical equation. Okay, so your radical equation, it has to have a variable underneath the square root. The radicand is what's under the square root. Or it has a variable with a rational exponent. Rational exponent is a fraction exponent. That is what we are going to cover tomorrow. So we will not have any rational exponent radical equations today. That is a separate thing we're going to do tomorrow. But that is considered a radical equation. Today you're just going to see like a square root or a cube root or a fourth root or one of those in each of these problems today. Okay, here's what you want to do uh, to solve these. All right, you want to get whatever, like if you're working with a square root, a cube root, a fourth root, whatever you're working with that, get that alone on one side. And then after you have that alone, what you're going to do is take both sides to, and I should have spaced that out better, like, um, oh, how do I want to write that? To a power. I'll just write it like that. So, like, if you're dealing with the square root, the power you're going to use is 2. If you're dealing with the cube root, the power you're going to take both sides to would be the third. If you're dealing with a fourth root, we'll take both sides to the fourth power. So we're going to do that in some of our examples today. But the key is you have to get the radical alone by itself on one side first and then do that. And then the rest of it's just algebra. So let me scooch this up. Okay, isolate the radical. So my first question, I have two times square root. And then under the square root, I have, so that whole thing's under the square root, the 5x plus 1, and then I have that negative 10 kind of to the side. Okay, what would you do first if you're trying to get that square root alone? What do you think? Move, move the 10. Get rid of any addition. It's not under the square root. Get rid of any addition or subtraction first. All right. So we'd get 12. All right. Then what would you do? Divide by 2. You've got to get rid of that. You want the radical totally alone. Now, you cannot add or subtract or divide or multiply things out from underneath the radical. So we're going to have our radical by itself in this next step after we divide, whoops, sorry, divide by 2. So I have this 5x plus 1 equals 6. Okay, now, depending on the type of root, this is a square root, right? So all you have to do is take both sides to the second power. Whatever the index is, we're going to take both sides to that power to cancel that out. So the square root and squared cancel each other out. So I have left here 5x plus 1. And then, again, some of these you'll probably know off the top of your head, but feel free to use your calculator. I literally just square 6, so I'm going to get 36. And then we actually have to finish solving the problem. So we are just got a two-step equation here. I'm going to subtract 1. I got 5x equal to 35, get rid of the 5, what's your x value going to be here? 7, done. That's all you have to do. Now, if I look at the question right next to this, I already have my radical isolated, right? So I have this cube root, everything, that 2x plus 1 that's under the cube root, it's already isolated. So I don't need to do anything to get it by itself, it's already alone. What you got to do to cancel it out, though, if you're working with a cube root, you got to take both sides to the third power. So just on the left, the cube root and the cube just cancel each other out. So you just write down whatever you had underneath, which is the 2x plus 1. The other side, you actually have to take that number to the third power. So do you guys know how to, you guys know how to do that on the, the button? Like, just in case you're doing like a 3 or a 4. So if I do 5, and maybe you already know this off the top of your head from all the simplifying we've been doing. But if you need an exponent other than 2, or even if you need an exponent of 2. Right above the division key, there's that little button that looks like a triangle with no base. It's called a caret. That'll give you an exponent if you type that button. If you have an 83, it will actually put that symbol 
in there, but if you have an 84, I think it just gives you an exponent. Then you can do your third power, and 5 to the third power is going to be 125. And then we'll just solve the rest of the equation. So I'm going to move the 1, subtract the 1. So we get 2x equals 124. And then we just have to divide by 2. And I think that's 62, but let me check. Yes. And these, if you want, you can plug your answers back in and check really easily. Okay, is anybody having a question? Okay, I put this next one on here on purpose because people always screw this up. Okay, so I have 6, just the number 6, plus 4 fourth roots of x. Biggest mistake I see on a question like this, I don't know why people do this, but they will like add the 4 and the 6 together and they'll say 10. Like, don't do that. Just, I'm, that's what, the reason I put this on here, just to point that out to you. Do not do that. You want to actually, that 4 is attached to that radical. So I want to isolate the radical here. So I got to move the 6, just subtract it. Do not add that to that 4. I don't know why people do that, but I just want to make a point about it. Okay, so I have 4 attached to that 4th root of x. So subtracting 6 from 18, we're going to get 12. And then again, the goal is to isolate the radical. So the, I just have a 4th root of x, so I got to get rid of that 4. So we want to make sure... If you're multiplying by 4, you just divide by 4 to cancel it out. All right, so I have 4th root of x, and this will be 3. Now, to cancel out a 4th root, we're just going to do a 4th power. And you might know this, or use your calculator if you don't. Then we don't, even, we don't even have to do anything else here, because all that's left under that 4th root is the x. So 3 to the 4th power, 81, and done. Does anybody have a question? These are going to get a little bit harder. Okay. Now, depends on the question. The, these two are not too bad, but I got some on the back there that are a little bit harder. All right, so this is a little bit weird, but I have my radical isolated. I have a square root x squared plus 3. Don't look at that and go, oh, x squared, and just cancel that out with the square root not allowed because of the plus 3. You have to get that down to one thing underneath the radical before you take the square root, so that cannot be simplified as it's in that format. Okay, we're going to have to get rid of the square root, and we're going to do just like we've been doing in these other questions. We're going to square that. Now, the annoying part is, on the other side, I have to square that whole expression, so it's x plus 1. All right, now, on this side, square root and squared just cancel each other out. So I just have the x squared plus 3. Now, do not write x squared plus 1. We're going to get in a fight, so don't do that. Okay, if you're squaring something, you're multiplying it by itself. And I know this is a little bit annoying, but you're just going to have to do a little bit of a foil or box if you like that better on that question. When you square something, if you have adding or subtracting, you cannot distribute the exponent. You're multiplying it by itself. So I actually have to do that multiplication. Now, once we get this going, this is not going to be bad, though. So, however, if you want to draw a box, please draw a box. I'm just going to foil in mine. You should get x squared plus 1x plus another 1x, and then 1 times 1 actually gives you 1. So all simplified there, we should have x squared plus 2x plus 1 if we do the x plus 1 and square that. Okay, now I'm just going to bring the rest of this down here. The super duper nice part about this question, if I try and combine my like terms, do you guys see here I have an x squared and it's actually just a 1x squared on both sides. So if I try to combine my like terms, like put all my x squareds on one side, what actually happens in this particular question, those would cancel out. I just have 1x squared on both sides of the equation, so if I just subtract it from both sides, it's literally gone. And so the equation I'm really solving here is 3 equals 2x plus 1. We're just going to do two steps real quick. We're going to subtract the 1. And we get 2 equals 2x, divide by 2, and x is just going to be 1. And that's literally all you have to do. Does anybody have a question? It's not bad, it's just a little bit extra because we have to actually do like a little foil on that top part. 
Okay, now this one is interesting. This has radicals on both sides. So I have this under radical 4x minus 10. And I really, I mean, I technically don't have this other radical isolated because I have a 3 in front of it. But uh, honestly, that's as simplified as you guys could get on both sides in terms of I have two radicals there. If you would put one on each side, what you're going to do to cancel the radical, these are both square roots, so I'm going to square both sides to cancel it out. On the left, just square root and squared cancel each other out, so just be the 4x minus 10. Okay, does anybody know on the other side of that, like what would I do with the 3? So I'm, we're going to square it. Okay, this, this is just a product. Right? We don't have to FOIL anything here. This is just a product. This is 3 times the square root. So the 3, I'm just going to write this, the 3 gets squared, and then it's there's no adding in between those. It's just a product. And so the square root and the squared do cancel each other out. The only thing I would tell you to do there is make sure you put, if that's got more than one term, just put that in parentheses. So the 3 squared, if you want to just go ahead and write 9, that's totally fine. I do need to do a little distributive property there because I have that in front of the whole radical there. So we'll have to multiply both of those guys by 9 real quick. So we get 9x minus 45. But then from there, this is just a couple step equation. Totally up to you. If it's me um, and I've got variables on both sides, I try to keep the variable positive if I can. So if it was me, I would subtract 4x from both sides. And I'm just going to do this in the same step to save myself a little tiny bit of space. I'm going to add 45 to the other side in the same step just to save some space. And that's going to end up giving me, let's see, 35, oh, equals 5x. We had that in one of the other questions. So x is going to be 7 here. These don't always have to be nice numbers. If you get a fraction or a decimal or something, that doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong. Is anybody having a question? Okay. Now, for our purposes here, there is a potential for extraneous solution. We probably haven't talked about that in a super long time because the only other types of equations that introduce this would be absolute value, and that's like the very first unit at the beginning of the year. So extraneous solution, just to remind you, this is an extra answer. Literally has the word extra at the beginning of it, right? Extra answer that doesn't work in the original problem. Okay, for our purposes, we are dealing with radicals and we're you're going to only see square roots on the back side of this we're only going to deal with if we have a square root could we have an extraneous solution the only thing that you would have to make sure that you don't have you cannot have a square root equal to a negative number like if i take a square root there's no way for that to be a negative value so when we check these, you're going to look for where you have your square root by itself. If it's equal to a negative number, then that's going to be an extraneous solution. So there's a potential that that gets introduced here, so that's where you're going to check. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that on these problems down here. Okay, now if I just try to isolate my radical here, right? I'm going to subtract 18 on this first problem. I have square root of 7x equals, what is that, negative 14. Okay, now me being a math teacher knows right this very second, um, I'm going to say no, I'm, I'm going to just say right here, this has no solution because I know that. But I'm going to go through and show you why. But if I have a square root and it's equal to a negative number, there's nothing you could plug in for x that would make that happen in that situation. But I'm going to keep going and I'm going to show you why. Okay, so if I cancel my radical just like we were doing in the front, I'm going to square both sides, right? So I would have, cancel my square root out. So I'd have 7x 
equals 196. Negative 14 squared. This is where the extraneous solution gets entered in because that squaring cancels out that negative and gives you positive 196. And let me see if that's divisible by 7. Yes. So I'm going to divide by 7. Okay, so theoretically, my answer is 28. However, if I go and where you want to go, you want to go where you had the square root by itself to check. So pretend I don't have the squared and everything in there. If I plug in, I'm going to do on my calculator, second square root, I'm going to do 7 times 28 under the square root. If I do that, that is positive 14. It is not negative 14. So that's why this would be one of those extra answers. You cannot have a square root equal to a negative. That's a little bit easier to see in that particular problem than it's going to be able to see in the other questions that we're going to do. So no solution for that question. If I plug that in, the answer would be 14, not negative 14 like it's supposed to be. Now the rest of these, we're going to call on some skills from quadratics to do these guys. All right, we're going to have our square root by itself. And to cancel it out, we're going to square both sides. Now, when I do that, there's a potential here. I have a square root equal to a variable. And this, this is where I would check right here in this original problem. Okay, this square root cannot be equal to a negative number. So just keep that in mind when we get our x values here. On this side, square root and squared cancel each other out. So you just get 3x plus 10, and then the other side would be equal to x squared. I promise you I'm not going to give you anything that's not factorable, but you can use the quadratic formula on these if you want to. What I would do, um, you want to keep your x squared term positive. I'm going to set this equal to 0, and to do that, I'm going to actually subtract the 3x and subtract the 10 from both sides. So a little review from quadratics to do this question here. Can you all... Use quadratic formula if you prefer that, but I promise anything I give you in this situation will be factorable. Can you guys think of two numbers? If you would multiply them together, you would get negative 10. The same two numbers would give you negative 3. Perfect. Okay, so my factors would be x minus 5, x plus 2. That would be your factored form. Now, what are my actual answers to the question? Five and negative two. Okay, now here's the deal. Five and negative two. Okay, now remember, you cannot have a, a square root equal to a negative number. So I'm going to go right here. If I plug in and I just check this side, I just can't have that square root equal to a negative. If I plug in five, five is a positive number. Sweet. We're good to go. If I plug in back here, negative 2, then I've got a square root equal to a negative 2. That is not allowed. So that would be an extraneous solution there. So my only answer to that question would be 5. We did all the algebra right, but if you actually go and plug negative 2 back in there, you're going to have a square root equal to a negative, which is not possible. So one answer works there, the other one does not. Okay. I got a couple more just to show you. There's different ways that this can turn out. These are going to seem really similar, but each one's a little bit different. Okay. I tell you what. That's where I'm I got my square root by itself. That's where I'm going to go plug it back in to check. I'm just going to leave myself some space so I can show you the step where I'm going to square both sides here. But I'm going to check in that original problem. Your square root cannot be equal to a negative. That's where you're going to have a potential for an extraneous solution. So I'm going to cancel that square root out by squaring both sides. So then we would just have negative 5x minus 6. The other side would end up being x squared. Really similar to the last problem. What I would do, I would set that equal to 0. But you want to, if you're trying to factor, you want to keep your x squared term positive. So I would actually, I know it's a little bit more work, but I'm going to add the 5x and the 6 to the other side because you want that squared term to be positive, makes it easier to factor. So you'd have x squared plus 5x plus 6. And I promise you can factor it. If you are more into the quadratic formula, you could use the quadratic formula on any of these quadratic equations. Can you guys think of two numbers? that you multiply them, you get 6, the same two numbers, you'd add them and get 5. 
2 and 3, right? Okay, so plus 2 plus 3. My actual answers would be what would set those equal to 0. So negative 2, negative 3. Now, I'm going to just go back up to the very original problem. So I cannot have a square root equal to a negative, and we have the potential for that because I, I have a variable on that side, so i got to check and see. If we just have a number over there, there's nothing to check, but if you've got a variable over there, you got to check and see if it would make your square root equal to a negative. So right there, square root equal to a negative, literally the same argument here. It's, if I plug that in, I've got negative 2, negative 3. Both of those guys are extraneous. So this question actually would be no solution here. All right, and then I got one more, and I am going to rewrite this. Now, when I plug this back in, I'm going to make sure my square root can't be equal to a negative. I'm just going to plug it into this x plus 5, but we don't know what x is, so that's why we got to check and make sure whatever we get for x, it doesn't make that side negative. So forgive, I'm just going to rewrite this real quick so I can show you where I'm going to plug it back in without any work on it. So I'm going to square this. Now, this is kind of similar to one of the questions we had on the front that will be a little tiny bit more work because I'm going to have to square that x plus 5. Don't distribute anytime you have exponent when you have adding or subtracting because you'll miss out on the middle term and you'll get it wrong. So it has to multiply that x plus 5 squared means it's being multiplied by itself. Sorry, we got to do like a little foil here. All right, or box if you like to do the box. So x times x give you x squared. x times 5 gives you 5x. Then you're going to get another 5x. And 5 times 5 is 25. And if you can do this in fewer steps than I am doing, that is completely fine. I'm just going to combine my like terms here real quick. Now, if we're working with the quadratic, which we are here, we want to set this equal to zero. And I would always recommend, like, set so the x squared term is positive if you want to try and factor. To do that here, I'm going to subtract the 3x and the 13. I just actually have stuff to subtract that from that's a little different than the other problems we were just looking at. So 7, or sorry, 10x minus 3x is going to be plus 7x. And then 25 minus 13 is going to be 12. All right, so I need two numbers. If I multiply them, I'm going to get 12. Add them, I'm going to get 7. Can you think of two, three and four? Yeah. Okay, now, my two answers are both negative, right? But that doesn't necessarily mean they're extraneous. You have to make sure they don't make that expression. I want to see if it makes this negative. Okay, if I plug in negative 3 right there, does that make my square root equal to a negative number? No, because negative 3 plus 5, that would be positive 2. So this is okay. As long as it's positive, it doesn't matter. Okay, if I plug in 4, or sorry, negative 4, does that make that expression negative? If I do negative 4 plus 5, no, if this, okay, so just because it's negative doesn't mean it's extraneous. It's if it makes that expression that your radical is equal to negative. So this is okay. So actually in this situation, you would have two answers, the negative 3 and the negative 4 both work in that situation. So if you're doing this, the only time you should have to check if you have a square root equal to something where there's an x make sure that whatever that expression is is not negative. If it's negative, you just have an extra answer.